That's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Always Compete Seahawks podcast. Today, we are on PFN Mock Draft Simulator. It's a website. It's great for mock drafts. If you want to go over, check it out. I highly recommend it. But today, what we're doing is we are doing a first round NFL mock draft. Totally realistic. This is you know, going to be one of our first mock drafts that we're going to do for the actual draft, including all of the teams in the first round. Uh, the NFL draft is less than two weeks away, so expect a few more of these videos uh, because we're trying to obviously predict the whole first round correctly. So in this episode, we aren't going to be doing trades. This is just going to be, you know, without trade mock drafts. So obviously, there will be trades in the first round, and maybe we could speculate some teams that we think could trade up, could trade out, etc. But for this mock draft, we are going to do no trades. Uh, we, we're doing 50-50, so... Uh, Sam, my close over here, will be taking all the odd picks. I will be taking the even picks. And then at the end of the draft, we're just kind of going to review and just see what we did. And uh, each draft pick has a one minute on the clock, which is a little bit less than they have of the actual draft. Uh, so, Sam, before we kind of get into it, do you have any thoughts you want to get out of the way? Um, you know, it's going to be – it's definitely an interesting year to do a mock draft. There's a lot of question marks. So, I'm, I'm ready to hop right on in. I'm excited. I get the first overall pick. I mean – Right. Not, not really a big job, but, you know. Let's draft, baby. So, with the first overall pick, right. who would you like to select? So, I'm not even going to start the timer for this one. I know who I'm picking. I'm picking Trevor Lawrence. It's It's been obvious from the get-go. Yeah, it's going to be Trevor sense. Lawrence going to Jacksonville at number and one. Generational. I'm pretty much just as guaranteed as Trevor Lawrence going one. The chips are falling. I think Zach Wilson goes two to the Jets. They just traded Sam Darnold. They need a quarterback. This guy is regarded as the second best quarterback on most people's, uh, you know, list. So I'm going to take Zach Wilson from the New York Jets. Yeah. All right. So now I'm actually going to start the timer for number three. This is a very interesting pick. Obviously, a division rival in San Francisco. I would love to pick Mac Jones for them. I would love it. Please. I please, would please. love it. But the two names that you've heard are Justin Fields and Mac Jones. Yeah, which means that the two names that I've heard leads me to believe that because these two names are coming up so much that expect the unexpected. I'm going Trey Lance. Whoa. I think I think there's a reason why these names have leaked. I think it's because they're trying they're trying to get teams who might be gushing over Justin Fields or Mac Jones to throw together like some sort of insane eight pick offer. Wow. But I, wow. I think that I think that Trey Lance overall holds the most upside. He is very safe with the football. He's athletic. He has a great arm, um, you know, and he could sit behind Jimmy G. And he could – I think he has a little bit higher upside than Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. So, I'm wow. taking Trey Lance. So, taking Trey Lance. again, we're doing a mock draft here and without trades. If I was the Falcons at four – now, this is an interesting scenario I'm in now because now Justin Fields is still on the board which I wasn't projecting him to be on the board. Justin Fields is from Atlanta, Georgia, went to high school there, briefly went to college in Georgia. He's an Atlanta kid, hometown kid. So this makes a lot of sense to pick Justin Fields at four. But I could seriously see if the Falcons would want to trade down from this pick. But I think in this circumstance that we're in, being that Justin Fields is still on the board, I think they go Justin Fields at four, personally yeah. speaking. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's fair. Now, now, next up for Cincinnati at five, I don't know why. Everybody's like, they need to pick Jamar Chase. They need to pick Kyle Pitts. It's either Joe Burrow can get sacked and have Kyle Pitts and Jamar Chase running routes, running routes <laughs> or he can throw to Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins with Penny Sewell in front of him. I'm taking a generational left tackle prospect in Penny Sewell here. Penny it's Sewell. The only option for him. It's the only okay. option. So, you mentioned, you know, Joe Burrow. Need somebody to throw to, you know, but you prioritize protection, which I agree with. I think the smart choice for the Bengals would be to go with Panay Sewell. Now, for the Dolphins, you got a guy in Tua Tungavailoa who was a rookie QB last year, didn't have a great year, but the Dolphins really didn't have weapons. You're sitting here at six, and a guy by the name of Kyle Pitts is still on the board. Huge, strong, tall, runs a four, runs a four, five, 40, I believe. No, four, four. Four, 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 flat. four. Wow. This guy is, he, in my opinion, if there's one lock outside of Trevor Lawrence to be a stud, it's Kyle Pitts. So if I'm mm -hmm. sitting here at six at the Dolphins, I'm, I am just overjoyed that Kyle Pitts is still on the board. 
I'm getting to a, a weapon and they can dominate the league together for the next 10 years. I'm taking Kyle Pitts, the yeah. tight end out of Florida. That's going to make Tua real happy. Kyle Pitts Very is just – he's so good. Like, honestly, he might be the best tight end prospect that we've seen in the last 10 years. Like, he's that, 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 that good. He's like so, the size of Megatron with, like, the speed of – He's one of the, It's insanity. It's like a yeah, build your own crazy. player in Madden. Yeah. Like what I used to do. Ridiculous. And he can run wide receiver for them, I assume. Next up, Detroit on the board. You lose two wide receivers here. You lost Kenny Galladay. You lost Marvin Jones. I think you got to go with, in my opinion, the best wide receiver in the draft by a little bit of a long shot. It might be a hot take. I'm going Jamar Chase here. Ooh, I just okay. think that Jamar Chase is such a great player. When it, he did play with Joe Burrow, absolutely phenomenal. They got to get Jared Goof some new weapons. Now, yeah. you have Carolina Panthers on the board. Carolina Panthers, I personally think that they go defense here. Mm-hmm. But – I wouldn't be surprised if they target offensive tackle. Now, uh, 40, uh, not 49ers, Panthers head coach Matt Rule, you know, he did a good job coaching them. They just traded for Sam Darnold. They have pretty good wide receivers. I am gonna t- I'm going to say that they take a corner here. I'm going to go mm-hmm. Patrick Sertan out of Alabama. In my opinion, the best corner in this draft class. Going to really bolster that defense and make Sam Darnold's life hopefully easier as a defensive unit with the stops and hopefully some turnovers. Made plays, played in the SEC. I like Patrick Sertan at eight. If I'm the Pan- if I'm the Panthers at eight, Patrick, Sert- yeah, Patrick, yeah, I said yeah. that right. All right, that's who I'm taking, Patrick Sertan. All at right, eight. so I'm kind of sitting here at nine. I'm looking around. Jalen Waddle for Denver could be a little bit appealing. I don't see it. You don't pick a wide receiver three at ninth overall. Uh, Rashawn Slater also could be appealing, but they're set at both tackles. I think they're okay there. Uh, Mac Jones could be interesting. But I don't think that, like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think that they would pick a quarterback unless Justin Fields or Trey Lance is on the board. I'm going to take Micah Parsons here. I think Micah Parsons Ooh. a really athletic linebacker talent who is it, just, just upside is absolutely flying off the charts. I think that's very worth it picking him at nine as the second straight defensive player off the board. All right. So number 10, we got the Dallas Cowboys now. The Dallas Cowboys haven't won a Super Bowl since 1995. But there's one thing that the Dallas Cowboys have always been under Jerry Jones. They've always been flashy. Jerry Jones has never shied away from pulling those, from getting the big ticket guys, signing big free agents, drafting the huge stars in college. And what bigger star than the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith? They just paid Dak Prescott $40 million a year. He's got studs at wide receiver. And it's totally a Jerry Jones move to go and get him another wide receiver. I feel like if they do this, they might try to move on from Amari Cooper, who I feel like is really expensive. Maybe get some more draft picks later in this draft. Who knows? But I think it's totally a Jerry Jones move to draft a guy like Devontae Smith at 10. Wow. I've never seen that before. But, I mean, I'm not talking about the offense. That's that's an I mean, tell me, tell me something that, that, that – I mean, tell me that's not something Jerry Jones would want to do. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's something that he might very well do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sitting here at 11 on the Giants. You need some offensive linemen. Uh, just overall, Rashawn Slater can move inside and outside. A beast. I like him a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think Rashawn Slater is a really good fit here at 11 to okay. the New York Giants. All right. I like Rashawn Slater. There's some debate about who's better, him or Panay Sewell. I would definitely go Panay Sewell, but would not be surprised if uh, Rashawn Slater goes a little bit higher in this draft. Now, The Eagles are in a very weird position right now because they really don't have the quarterback. They really don't have good weapons. Their offensive line is aging. Their defense isn't what it used to be. I mean, they need help all over the board. The Eagles, in my opinion, are a team that I would likely see try to move up, uh, try to get one of those top-end quarterbacks. I don't think they take Mac Jones at 12 because they just don't have the offensive line to keep him protected. Uh, I don't think they take, you know – a, a, a Jalen Waddle because like I said, uh, Jalen Waddle actually might be an option because, you know, team double Jalen Hurts at Alabama. So, you know, we're, we're kind of, eh, I don't know, man. Do you take a wide receiver at 12 when your team has big, big holes? I think if I am the Eagles, I got to sit here and I got to say, who is the guy that we can build a team around in the future? Because this season, not going to be great. We're not going to win 
this season. But who's mm-hmm. the guy that we can play for 10 years and be great for our franchise? I say J.C. Horn. J.C. Mm. Horn is a phenomenal corner, in my opinion, the second best in this class, and if, if you talk to most people. He's the type of guy that, you know, you saw the Lions many years had Darius Slay. Uh, phenomenal corner, but they just did, couldn't build a team. If you have a dominant corner, it helps your defense so much. I think the Eagles take J.C. Horn 12th overall, in my opinion. Yeah, like that that's a bold topic because like like you said, Jalen Waddle, you need some wide receivers. They just lost all Sean Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're kind of maybe looking at that. Maybe they're on the phone with Jalen Waddle and then they see that Jerry Jones just picked Devontae Smith. And maybe yeah. now they're in their draft room changing up, switching up some plays higher and lower on the draft board. Yeah. So JC Horn would not totally shock me, especially because the rest of their corners were absolutely horrific besides and, and one so. other point, uh the Eagles uh, if they get this corner, right, they have to go against the Giants, who just got Kenny Galladay. They have to go against the Cowboys, who in this reality would have Devontae Smith, uh, Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, right? Then mm-hmm. they have to go against Washington, who has Scary Terry, Curtis Samuel. So they don't have corners to defend all of those track stars in their division. So I think J.C. Horn in this reality makes a lot of sense, especially if Devontae Smith just went off the board. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I'm at the Chargers at 13. Once again, I don't know. First off, I don't understand why so many people are projecting that they go for Jalen Waddle. They have Keenan mm-hmm. Allen. They have Mike Williams. There's much bigger needs. I think that this team is in a legitimate position to win now. And I think you need to target offensive line. I think you pick a, a franchise left tackle in Christian Derrissaw out of Virginia Tech. Just a total beast. And it's going to kind of stop the run on offensive linemen for a little bit in this draft so now we're gonna get to the more flashy totally agree picks. with christian derisaw in this pick they need offensive tackle again rayshon slater went 11th to the giants panay sewell went to the Bengals. those two guys are off the board derisaw is the third best left tackle in this draft totally need to go offensive tackle if you're a chargers it's almost not a debate uh so i would definitely agree with you there now we're sitting at the vikings at 14 now the vikings our team, they need to get more dominant on the defensive side of the ball. They need that defense to be up to par with what their offense was like. Uh, if you remember a couple years ago, 2017, I believe, they had the second ranked, second or third ranked defense in the entire NFL. It's because of their phenomenal defensive line. So I'm going to take, Az- I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, Aziz Ahul- Ahulari. I-, I believe it's Aziz Ojolari. Aziz Ojolari. Uh, edge rusher from Georgia. They need that pass rusher. I think 14 is a good spot to take pass rusher. Middle of the round. Uh, if I'm correct, this is the first edge rusher off the board. I think he's the best in the class. Uh, honestly, they need pass rush bad. And I think this is something that could really help their defense win because they're in win now mode with Kirk and J. Jeff and, and all those guys on offense and Dalvin Cook and all those guys. Yeah. Um, once again, like Daniel Hunter is rumored to be in trade talks like at the at people i think people are forgetting at the very very beginning of free agency like march 16th which was the first day that you could bid on people the rumors came out that he was open in trade and he wants a trade so mm-hmm. i think it makes a lot of sense to pick another high upside guy from the sec like right. aziz ojalari um at 15 the patriots could go wide receiver here but once again they just signed Aguilar. And Kendrick Bourne to multi-year deals. So I don't really see them out there going for a wide receiver at this early. I would have had them picking J.C. Horn if he fell. Instead, I think they go Mac Jones. You know Ooh. you know, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban Ooh. have that connection. And I think that's where they go. I mean, he's kind yeah. of fallen a little bit. I think that's a good pickup for New England at 15. I personally don't think that Bill Belichick like like the offense that he had last year with Cam uh, in terms of his quarterback running so much. I think he's an old school guy, likes his guys to sit in the pocket, deliver reads, be well protected. That's totally Mac Jones style of football. So I would agree with you there. Um, We're looking at 16, the Arizona Cardinals, right? Jalen Waddle was brought to my mind, but you know what? I'm thinking, eh, I don't know. They have D hop. They have Christian Kirk. They have Andy Isabella. They just signed AJ green. They still got Larry Fitz. Who's probably in his last year. I don't think that receiver is the move at 16 if I'm them. But you know what I think is the move? Defensive line. Their defensive line could be nasty, nasty this year. Chandler Jones, 
They've got J.J. Watt on the outside, but they don't have a dominant presence in the middle of the defensive line. I am taking Christian Barmore, the defensive tackle from Alabama, sure up that defensive line. And again, if J.J. is clicking, if Chandler Jones is clicking, and then you have Christian Barmore in the middle, that is yet another scary defensive line in the NFC West. Dear God, help Russell Wilson. I think that's the move here at 16 if you're the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, Christian Barmore is a dominant, dominant defensive tackle. I think he had eight sacks last year from the interior, which is great. That's yep. like really good, especially in the SEC. Next up, so that's a run on three consecutive SEC players, two consecutive Alabama players. What's role, What's one motto Oakland or now Las Vegas Raiders have always lived off of? Just win, speed. baby. Speed. Oh, yeah. And speed kills. Yeah. That's, that's yep. the second one. Yeah. That, yep. That's what I was going for. Speed kills. That's – and, I mean, you want to talk? This is a team that needs wide receivers. Jalen Waddell is falling, like falling, falling. Mm-hmm. And yep. I think that if Jalen Waddell is here, I don't think that John Gruden can sit here and be like, all right, we have Henry Ruggs, and we're just going to pick Najee Harris. No, you can't do that. Jalen Waddell is the pick here. Two consecutive back-to-back years where they pick Alabama speedsters. I – Totally agree with that move. I think if the Raiders are at 17, Jalen Waddle's on the board. I mean, John Gruden and Mike Mayock are just licking their chops. Absolutely cannot believe Jalen Waddle's coming. Uh, I totally think the move's here. So right now we've picked three straight Alabama players, and we're coming up back to the Dolphins, who, again, have a quarterback that's from Alabama. So Najee Harris is definitely an option here. Definitely an option. And honestly, the Dolphins – do have a pretty big need at running back, but I just think 18 is too high to take a running back. I think that they have bigger issues. I think that they could probably get a good pick uh, in the second round. I just, I, I can't do it. I can't take Najee here at, at 18. A little too high for my liking, but what I am going to do is I'm going to get to another weapon. I'm going to get him a wide receiver. Would have taken Jalen Model had John Gruden not absolutely loved his speed. I'm going to go Rashad Bateman. In my opinion, the most underrated wide receiver in this draft class, wide receiver from Minnesota, has the ability to just go get the ball. Tua lays it out for him. Dolphins get Rashad Bateman. They've gotten two or two legitimate weapons in the first 18 picks. This is a great draft so far for the Dolphins. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're just building around Tua, which is really what you need right now. Get him, get him some of those elite weapons like he had at – Alabama, get us some more of those. Um, at 19, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at Washington has. They are a team coming off of a playoff run that nobody expected. Well, by run, I mean they made the playoffs. And they almost, they were the, they came arguably, you could say, the closest to beating the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With their third string quarterback. Yeah, with Taylor Heineke. And their defense is very young. They're up and coming and they're already really good. The NFC, I mean, the NFC East just got stronger. I mean, not stronger, faster. Faster, yes. And you need a fast guy to keep up. I'm going Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa out of Notre Dame. Ooh. Fast, fast athletic linebacker. Honestly, reminds me a lot of Jordan Brooks and what we got out of him last year. Just yep. very fast and can go sideline to sideline. I love him for Washington, especially because they really need linebackers. Just a quick note. I think that. He's definitely got the best name in the entire draft in terms of the oh, first yeah. round. Uh, absolute baller sure. name. So at 20, now this one's a little personal to me. I live here in Illinois, big fan of the Bears. I uh, watched all of their games. I'm pretty involved. So every single Bears fan who watches this draft will scream at the top of their lungs to take a quarterback. Now the Bears regime, in fact, the Bears just in general throughout their history of the franchise have not been able to solve the problem that is quarterbacking. They just, they can't do it right. They pick guys all the time and they just don't work out. They don't pan out, whatever it is. You're sitting here at 20, you need a quarterback. But if you look at the quarterbacks that are available, Kellen Mond is not a pick at 20. He's a second round guy. David Mills, Kyle Trad, none of those guys are first round talents. Okay, so we're moving off of quarterback in the first round. All right, Najee Harris is one of the top guys available. Well, you got David Montgomery. You're not, you're not going to go him. I like a guy right here, Greg Newsom II. Now, this isn't a great – this isn't a pick that's going to be, have Bears fans, you know, jumping for joy, but a couple things to consider. Number one, the Bears have always prided themselves on defense. And 
Honestly, I think they need to get back to that. They just lost Kyle Fuller in this offseason, who's been a starting caliber corner. They were replacing him with the guy, Greg Newsom, local kid, went to Northwestern, graded as the 20th prospect. The Bears are the 20th pick. I mean, that's a great value pick, in my opinion. I would go Greg Newsom to the second here, and then I would try to snag a guy like Kellen Mond late in the second round. That is my pick for the Bears at 20 overall. The fans won't like it, but I think it's the right pick. Yeah, you know, the fans can't always get what they want. They can't always get the quarterback. It's just kind of how it works, you know, especially in this year's class. Now I'm looking at Indianapolis here. You just got yourself a new quarterback in Carson Wentz, who's coming off of, even though he didn't play like the last five games, he was still the most sacked quarterback in football. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to happen again. The Colts have a fantastic offensive line, but they Mm -hmm. just lost a stalwart there at Anthony Costanzo, left tackle. He just retired after like, 10 years with the team. I look at it. I think that there's not a lot of needs on this Colts team. I think you need to go out and get a left tackle. Automatically, I'm looking at two names. Elijah Vera Tucker, who has potential to move out to tackle from guard. And then the guy who I'm going to pick here, I'm going to go with maybe a little bit of of a surprise this early. I'm going with Alex Leatherwood, a player who can play right away from the SEC, has left tackle experience, you want a guy, you know, who can – who you know because you need, have a need at left tackle, who you can just plug in right away. I think right. Alex Leatherwood fits that the most. All right. So, I, I agree with the pick of Alex Leatherwood. The Titans right here sitting at 22. A little interesting. They've made the playoffs the past couple of years. Ryan Tannehill and, and Derrick Henry have been the anchors of that offense. They got A.J. Brown, who's a stud at wide receiver. So, again, Najee Harris is not going down here. Uh, can you imagine the Titans having two Bama backs that could just absolutely brutalize you? I mean, that just would be borderline unfair. Yeah. I think personally, Titans have to go defense here. Their biggest issue last year was that they could not, for the life of them, get to the quarterback. Jadavian Clowney and Vic Beasley just did not work out for them. So I'm going to go with Quiddy Pie. Maybe I mispronounced that. My apologies. Edge from Michigan. They need that pass rusher. They need to get to the opposing team's quarterback. And I think edge rusher, I think he's the best edge rusher on the board right now. Yeah, I for sure, I feel you there. You know, Pay is a very quality. uh, He he, honestly, you could make a legitimate argument for him being the best edge in the class. I really like him. Uh, You just got Bud Dupree, and Mm -hmm. now you can plug him in right next to him and maybe hopefully have a better pass rush year Mm -hmm. than, than they did last year. Now I'm looking at the Jets at 23. You know, I'm sitting there. If I'm like Joe Douglas, I'm sitting there. I just got my quarterback. Zach Wilson just came to the team. I'm sitting here. I'm like, man, I need offensive line. I'm okay. going to Elijah. I'm going to Elijah Vera Tucker because you Ooh. don't need a left tackle and Samuel Cosme with Mackay Becton. He can Ooh. play right tackle and then he can play guard. I like the pick here. You know, very quality. Build that offensive line around Zach Wilson to give him the best chance to succeed like you did not give to Sam Darnold. All right, right here at Pittsburgh. Now, I'm not a big, big Pittsburgh guy, but unfortunately, I think it's pretty obvious what they need here. Last year, they could not run the football. Mm -hmm. Just lost James Conner. I think they've got one year left where it's they have a chance to win it with Ben Roethlisberger and Juju and all of the guys on the team. The defense is pretty solid. If I'm the Steelers here, I am so happy that Najee Harris has fallen to 24. I'm getting him to bulk up the run game to ground and pound and make like make life easier for Big Ben. I got to take Najee Harris, running back out of Alabama right here. Yeah, I like to pick up. You know, 24 is around that spot where I feel pretty comfortable picking a running back, especially if it's of Najee Harris's caliber. You know, so now I'm sitting here, Jacksonville 25. Once again, you just got a quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. You want him to succeed. This is where you. This is where Samuel Cosme heads off the board. He has potential to play both tackle spots. A very quality blocker. And once again, you, if you can bring in a franchise tackle and a franchise quarterback in the same class and have them spend all those four to five years together, drastically increases chances of success for both the quarterback and the tackle. Yep, totally agree. Uh, they need two most important positions in my opinion, quarterback and left tackle. They're getting that in the two top 25 picks. I mean, that's a great way to start off the Urban Meyer regime in Jacksonville. Uh, 26, looking at the Cleveland Browns. 
let's be honest, linebacker is the big one right here. Their linebackers were god awful last year. Uh, they also need help at edge rusher, but they just picked up Clowney. Clowney and Miles Garrett are pretty scary. So I say they go linebacker. They go Jamin Davis, linebacker yeah. from Kentucky. Best one on the board right now. Shore up that linebacker corpse. Make that defense better. Hopefully the Browns can go even farther this year. Yeah, I feel you there. I don't really know much about Jamin, da- Jamin Davis' play. I know that he's a freakish athlete. Like he ran like four three seven or something at linebacker. So that's scary. Uh, very scary for people in the, um, you know, and especially because Najee Harris just went off the board. You got to have somebody who played in the yep. same conference and knows how he plays and could be able to meet him yep, in yep. the lane. Absolutely. 27 for Baltimore. This is a really tough one. This is the first one where you really might have to think about what you do here because you have a need at edge. Joseph Osai, you know, I like him. Jason Owe, you want to talk about freakish athlete? He ran a 4 3 as a defensive end. Gregory Rizzo, another great potential pick. and But then you look at what you need at wide receiver. Terrace Marshall on the board here. Overall, I think you got to go with defense. I'm going Joseph Osai here. Um, I, don't, I don't think Terrace, Terrace Marshall is going to be the – is going to fix the problem at wide receiver. So I think you may as well just pick a guy who you know can fix a problem, like just losing Matt Judon. You need a yep. guy – who can just come in and play. Yeah, uh, totally agree right there. I think they do need pass rushers over there in Baltimore. Yannick Ngakwe really didn't work out. Clayus Campbell wasn't as good as advertised in my opinion, in terms of pass rushing. Um, so I'm totally, you know, on board with you there. Looking at the Saints, Saints are in a very weird position. I mean, their team is going to look completely different. Obviously, losing Drew Brees is, is huge. They would... I would think they might go quarterback, but again, looking at the quarterbacks on the board, you're not taking Kellen Mond at 28, David Mills, Kyle Trapp, none of those guys are going 28. So we're at the point where we're like, okay, do we take best guy available? Do we try to draft for need? Um, I personally think that they would like to go pass rusher. They just lost Trey Hendrickson. So I'm going to go Jason Owe, uh, edge from Penn State. Like you said, freak athlete. Going to be nice to pair with Cam Jordan on the on, on the other side. Uh, I personally think that the edge rusher is their biggest need as of right now. So I'm going to go edge for the Saints at 28. Pretty solid pick up there. Now I'm looking at what Green Bay needs. They need a wide receiver. I feel like mm. Devontae Adams, it, it, as amazing as he is, like he's incredible. But you can't let him do all the work. If he does all the work, then you're going to get predictable. Oh, we're just going to throw it to Devontae Adams and every once in a while with a deep ball to mark as well as Scantling. I think Mm -hmm. you need something to open up the offense a little bit. I'm going to skip over Terrace Marshall, and I'm going to somebody who can really open up the offense. I'm going Ron Dale Moore. Whoa. Uh, You know. Hot take alert. Hot take. But he's a guy who can completely revolutionize this offense. Reverses. uh, Screens. Just burning people downfield, a total speedster and very versatile. I think Rondale Moore, it makes a lot of sense when you look at it. It's a little bit of a reach, but when you look at it, it makes sense. Every draft is going to have one of those wow moments. Yeah. This is a wow moment for sure. Um, Yeah, this is the moment where like Rich Eisen and for NFL Network, he's on the thing and he goes, whoa, as he's announcing the pick. Yeah. That's what happens. This is... I mean, this would make Aaron Rodgers happy, I'm sure. Uh, I would have sworn that you were about to say Creed Humphrey due to the loss of Corey Lindsley. But, man, Rondell Moore, that's a very, very interesting pick. Uh, sitting at 30, if I am part of the Bills Mafia, there's one man's name that I'm screaming right now. The Bills did not have a running game last year. They just could not run the ball. Uh, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, those guys just was not it. I'm going to get a guy who played with a high-caliber quarterback in this year's draft. Some would say. Who runs, in my opinion, a lot like Alvin Kamara. Can be a great receiver, can run out of the backfield, is fast, is shifty, can create, you know, plays. I'm going to take Travis Etienne. This is a big pickup for the Bills. Got to run the ball. I think Travis helps with that, helps with the killing of the clock. 
again, this is a flashy move, but I think they go Travis Etienne with the 30th overall pick. That's that's very good. You know, you want to keep developing this offense to be the best that it can be. Etienne makes a lot of sense, especially with Devin Singletary really not developing how they wish he would. Mm-hmm. So now you're kind of looking at 31. You're Kansas City. You're coming off a Super Bowl run, but what was the one thing that killed you in the Super Bowl? Uh, it was offensive line. Offensive line. Now, now if I was a Chiefs, you know person in the front office i would take a look at like a guy like caleb farley but i just think offensive line is too much of a need to avoid so i'm looking at two names here creed humphrey you signed austin Blythe for a year but creed humphrey has a lot of potential and i love humphrey like a lot but i think tackle is very important you just cut both of your tackles mitchell schwartz and eric fisher i think tevin jenkins out of oklahoma state uh, makes a lot of sense here you know Mm-hmm. very solid player who you need to step in right away and produce. And I think Jenkins can do that. All right. And for the last pick, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Obviously, if you want to be technical, technical, they are the reigning best team in the NFL. So by definition, that means they have the least amount of holes, but I think one of their, and I'm going to get, I'm going to get, this is a hot take for sure. I think one of their positions of need is actually corner. Uh, they did a great job of shutting down the Chiefs, but I associate most of that to their dominant pass rush in that game, not so much their lockdown corners, although I do think that they did a good job. If I am the Buccaneers at 32, I'm going to take Caleb Fairley, a corner from Virginia Tech, and that is going to end the mock draft right there. We're going to view some results right here. We had Trevor Lawrence, one, Zach Wilson, two, Trey Lance. That was a wow, actually. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Justin Fields. Panay Sewell, Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, Patrick Sertan, Mika Parsons, Devontae Smith, Rayshon Slater, J.C. Horn, Christian Derrissaw. Uh, Want to help me with 14? Aziz. Uh, Aziz Ojolari. Ojolari. My apologies. Mac Jones, Christian Barmore, Jalen Waddell, Rashad Bateman, Jeremiah Awusi Karmahi. Great name. Greg Newsom, Alex Leatherwood, Quiddy Pahe, Elijah Vera Tucker, Najee Harris, Samuel Cosme. Jamin Davis, Joseph Asai, Jason Away, Rondo Moore, Travis Etienne, Tevin Jenkins, and Caleb Farley. That's our mock draft. Um, I think this looks pretty good, honestly. Yeah. I think a couple surprises. But yeah, you you like blew my mind with Rondo Moore on that yeah, one. I won't. Lie. I, I I've been a long term believer that the Packers are going to pick a wide receiver, like even after they lost Corey Lindsley. Um. You know, I just I, – I think that Green Bay has a lot of trust in the players that they can slide over. Like, Elton Jenkins, you could probably slide over, and he'll be, like, pretty good mm-hmm. at center. I think I think, I think that's what they're going to do because they just have incredible O-line depth. Honestly, so real quick, I just want to ask one question. If you're sitting here and you're looking, what's one winner that you immediately see? Like, besides, like, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, maybe a team, like, outside of the top five. What's one winner that you immediately see, and what's one loser that you immediately see? All right, so if I'm looking at one winner, I'm taking the Miami Dolphins because you're in a position where at six, you have the opportunity to take at least one superstar playmaker. You have the opportunity to take Kyle Pitts. I think if the Bengals take Panay Sewell, that is the best thing that could happen to the Dolphins. Yeah. Um, picks one, two, and three are pretty locked in. It's going to be three quarterbacks, you know, mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and then whoever the Niners pick at three, probably Justin Fields in my opinion, or Trey Lance. Fair. And then at four with the Falcons, I think they also go quarterback. You know, the Bengals are kind of a wild card. They could go pass catcher. They could go offensive tackle. I think the Dolphins, you're in a position where you could be able to take Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, Devontae Smith, Jalen Watt. Like, any of those guys are available. And then go to, down to 18 uh, right here, getting another pass catcher. In this scenario, the Dolphins get two studs for Tua. I think that's absolutely best-case scenario. I think the Dolphins are the big winners of round one. Yeah, that's fair to say. I do think that they are winners pretty much by a long shot. Well, not by a long shot. They're they're one of the top three winners, but I actually have another team winning. I'm going to give it to the Raiders just by getting that steal in Jalen Waddell at 17. That would realistically be a steal. Some people say that he's the best receiver in this class. So if you can get him at 17, that's like a great value and another guy to pair alongside Henry Ruggs. 
and give uh, Derek Carr another weapon. And maybe this is John Gruden's last chance. So you need a yeah. guy who's just going to be able to blow everything up and is, you know, is going to be able to be a quality player. And if I'm looking for one immediate loser, now this is a little bit more tough because it's kind of hard to lose in the first round immediately. Yeah. If I'm saying right off the bat, who's a loser in this draft? I got a loser. I I I think you go ahead and say because I'm thinking a little bit. If I'm if if I'm the Chicago Bears, especially their fan base, I mean I, I feel pretty down right now. Bears are sitting at 20. Again, they had the worst possible outcome you could finish your season with. They didn't win a playoff game. They got absolutely blown out, which means they don't have a good draft pick. They lost – I mean, they have no answer at quarterback right now. At 20, none of the guys are available at 20. You have to go with the corner. I mean, come on. Again, I think Greg Newsom is a good pick from where the chips fell in this draft. But unless the Bears trade up or by some miracle one of the guys falls to 20, the Bears are the big losers in this draft because they are the most quarterback needy team in the worst position. So it just sucks for the Bears, in my opinion. Yeah, that's that's pretty fair to say. I'm going to have a hot take as our loser here. I'm going to say Philadelphia, and not Ooh. because of the player that they chose. I love J.C. Horn, but I think that they were kind of forced into this pick. If this happens, they're forced into it by Devontae Smith going to the Cowboys. Right. Personally, I think that – they would have picked Jalen Waddle if the Cowboys would have picked a guy like, you know, JC Horn or Caleb Farley or certain field of them. And I think they're almost forced into this pick because it's not necessarily your top need. So, you know, you're in, you're in a situation where, you know, like you're almost pushed into this box where like, well, the Cowboys have like the best receiving core in the NFL. How are we going to stop it? We need to pick a corner now, even though it might not be the thing that we want to do the most. So that's the right. way I'm kind of looking at it. And you can kind of take that however you want. Once again, not because of the player. I love J.C. Horn, but just because of the circumstances in which they picked the player. Yeah, no, I, I got you. Uh, they definitely became the 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 uh, the weakest link in that division, you know, with Devontae Smith and Rayshon Slater yeah. going in the two picks before them. I just noticed there's three NFC, NFC East picks, you know, in a row, which is – hilarious to me that's got to be so much drama going on uh i could definitely see one of the teams i could see a team like you know the the giants or something leapfrogging to nine just to piss off the cowboys or like the eagles going up to nine or something to piss off the cowboys like there's gonna be bad blood uh between these guys because the giants right now really dislike the eagles because of the playoff thing i think this just makes for good tv having these three teams in connection with one another but you know, if you had to kind of – and this is the last question I'll ask. Outside of, like, the top five, which is pretty set in stone, I'd say one, two are locks, you know, three, four, we kind of know where they're going, and five is between a couple of guys. Outside of, like, the top five or six, what do you think is the biggest lock to be uh, chosen by the team? Like, what player do you think is, like, you'll be like, okay, this guy is going to this team, and you'd almost guarantee it. That's tough because, like, you would want to say Kyle Pitts, but there's always the risk that they would pick Jamar Chase. So I can't say right. that. Realistically, if everything in the top five falls into how I expect it to go, I'm pretty confident saying that Patrick Sertain would head to the Carolina Panthers. I think that, like, they, they would consider a quarterback if Justin Fields fell. Yep. I, I think it's pretty safe to say that Sertain – they have a huge knee at corner. They're in a division with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Michael Thomas, one healthy, and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. You need corners. I just think it makes a lot of sense for them to go certain. And I think you can almost, almost lock it in. I'm saying like that's like a 95% chance that, that happens if everything in the top five falls into yeah. how we expect it to go. Yeah. I would piggyback off that, and I would say I think my almost guarantee would be the New York Giants at 11 taking Rayshon Slater. Uh, they need offensive tackle. Like, they're not going to hide that. They need offensive tackle help for Daniel Jones. Uh, and I think Panay Sewell, there's no way he's on the board at 11. Rayshon Slater is clearly the second best uh, offensive tackle to go. Um, Nate Solder really didn't work out for them. 
and they need a guy who's going to be a cornerstone at left tackle for them for many years to come. I think that's Rayshon Slater. So I would almost guarantee that he goes 11 to the Giants, assuming uh, a team like the Chargers doesn't try to like leapfrog them or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I was thinking about that as well. I was also thinking about Darisaw to the to the um, yeah to yeah, Chargers I could, so because I of that. the need at an offensive yeah. line as well. Yeah. So that's kind of our first round first round mock draft. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll probably come up with a couple more of those just to kind of get those uh, golden views from the uh, NFL draft coming up. It's currently, you know, big. So uh, we'll do a couple more of these. Maybe we'll spice it up a little bit. We'll do trades and all that. But uh, let us know what you guys thought down below. Let us know who you want your favorite team to pick, uh, all of that. And, uh, you know, I like the Seahawks pick at 23 of Jamal Adams. thought it was a great pick. Yeah, uh, I don't know how it's it. steel. Steel it's, yeah, it's, it's such a great steal. Uh, he's so good. He played last year and got us nine and a half sacks. So, you know, we're uh, – Yeah, he played for us this. before we picked him. That's was, how – loyalty uh, off rip. That's what – loyalty before.